In this video, I'm going to show you a tool that will help you stop writing boring, cuttable characters. This is something you've probably never seen anywhere else before, but once I walk you through how to use it, it's going to change the way you see story in your own writing for the rest of your life. How's that for a big promise? My name is Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO and publisher at StoryGrid, where we help writers build the skills, write a book, and leave their legacy. StoryGrid was created by my partner, Sean Coyne, an editor and writer with over 30 years of experience. So what's this tool I'm promising to teach you about? Well, it's all about order, chaos, and complexity. So how does this help you write? So I'm just gonna go through each one, explain what it is, give you some examples, and show you how having this lens on your characters is gonna help you write interesting and exciting characters that readers care about. So let's start with order. What is order? Order is the preference for structure, routine, and predictability in life. It represents a control mechanism, a way to keep chaos at bay by sticking to well-trodden paths and rules. And here's the thing you need to know. Too much order is bad. We do not want too much order. Too much order is the source of dictators, tyrants, and bureaucracy. Examples include Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling, O'Brien from 1984 by George Orwell, The White Witch from The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, President Snow from The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. But too much order doesn't just create villains, it's often the negative space that the protagonist finds themselves in at the beginning of a story. We have Bob Parr in Pixar's The Incredibles. We have Bilbo in The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. We have Macon Leary in The Accidental Taurus by Ann Tyler. Hutch Mansell in the movie Nobody. So we have to understand that too much order is a negative thing. Any characters that are tipping, tipping, tipping more and more to order, they're going towards a bad place. And so we see this in our villains, we see this in our protagonist as well. So now let's look at chaos. What is chaos? Chaos is the embodiment of unpredictability, fluidity, and constant change. It is the wild card, the unexpected curveball life throws that breaks the monotony and predictability. And once again, too much chaos is bad. This is where you get total volatility and unrest that makes it impossible to feel safe. Examples of villains include the Joker from DC's Batman, Randall Flagg from The Stand by Stephen King, the Queen of Hearts from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, and Gollum from The Lord of the Rings. And again, it's not just the antagonists or the villains here, we see overly chaotic protagonists too. Elizabeth Bennet in Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Tony Stark in Marvel's Iron Man, Lisbeth Salander in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson, and Jake Peralta in the TV show Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So once again, too much chaos is a bad thing. If we have characters that are tip-tip-tipping to chaos, they're moving in a bad direction. And again, we see this in both the villains and the heroes, the antagonist and the protagonist. So now let's look at complexity. So what is complexity? Complexity is the mixture of both order and chaos. We get the stability and predictability of order with the novelty and spontaneity of chaos. It's the balance that allows for growth, new experience, and adaptation while still maintaining a sense of security and structure. So complexity equals good. We need both order and chaos in our lives in order for us to be healthy, growing individuals. If we lean too far to order, we never try anything new, we become overly structured, and we become rigid. If we move too far into chaos, then we can't ever feel safe, people don't feel safe around us, and we never know what's going to happen next, which creates an unsafe space. So we need complexity. This is what I want you to start using when you're planning out and writing your characters. Where do they fall on that spectrum? And the biggest thing you don't want them to be doing is falling right smack dab in the middle in complexity. You need characters that are leaning too chaotic or too ordered. So let's look at a couple examples. At the beginning of your story, you want your protagonist to be either too ordered or too chaotic. So if we look at the narrator from Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk, he is overly ordered and order is eating his soul. At the other end of that spectrum, we can look at a protagonist, a hero, like Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games, who is overly chaotic and chaos is going to get her killed. So then what you see 
in each of these stories is that the author brings in characters to start balancing out the protagonist. So if your protagonist is overly ordered, you want to bring in chaotic characters. If your protagonist is overly chaotic, we want to bring in overly ordered characters. So let's look at our two examples. So in Fight Club, Tyler Durden arrives as a source of chaos to break the narrator out of his overly ordered life. If we look at The Hunger Games, Peta and Haymitch, who though himself is chaotic, he is trying to add order to Katniss. So Peta and Haymitch are sources of order because they want to keep her safe. So sometimes the chaos or order is good and we simply need characters around our protagonist to offer further insight. The protagonist doesn't necessarily have to change. So if you start looking at movies, books, TV, and your own writing through this lens, you'll start seeing this show up all the time. Characters, in order to be interesting, are going to be falling on one end or the other of the spectrum. They're either going to be moving more chaotic or more ordered. And then as we pan back and we start looking at our whole cast of characters, we can start seeing how this order and chaos is constantly playing. So if our protagonist is overly ordered, we need chaotic characters. Our antagonist may be chaotic as a reversal on them. And we can start seeing this show up over and over. But if you want your characters to be interesting, they have to be either overly chaotic or overly ordered. And a lot of times in your story, the lesson the protagonist needs to learn is if they're overly ordered, they need to complexify. If they're overly chaotic, they need to complexify. So two of my favorite examples. The first is the accidental tourist. Macon Leary is an overly ordered individual. And I will tell you, the reason why this book hit me so hard is as I was reading it, I thought, this is what could happen to me. I am an overly ordered individual. Whenever I get stressed, whenever I get afraid, I tend to start overly ordering my life getting more rigid and more structured. And as I watched Macon Leary descend into an hell of overly ordered life, what happened is, is chaos got thrown into his life. He broke his leg, ended up having to go move in with his family members, which were nothing but chaos. And then a new woman entered his life, which was nothing but chaos. So if you want to see just a good example, first of just fantastic writing and a wonderful book, but go read The Accidental Taurus by Ann Tyler and just watch for how order and chaos show up in the story. Another example I love is looking at Batman and Joker. I'm looking specifically at the 2008 movie directed by Christopher Nolan, The Dark Knight. And what I love about this is that Batman is actually a source of chaos. So the city is overly ordered by the mob. So he comes in as a source of chaos to disrupt their life. But at the same time, the Joker is a source of chaos as well, but he has a different goal with his chaos. He wants anarchy. He wants nothing to stand. He wants to burn everything. He just wants to create chaos for the sake of creating chaos, where Batman's trying to be a source of chaos in order to break up the overly ordered evil structures in Gotham. And so if you want to see just a really interesting take on chaos and how it works in story, go rewatch if you haven't watched it already. 2008 Dark Knight directed by Christopher Nolan. So when you're thinking through your characters, your protagonists, your antagonists, think about are they overly chaotic? Are they overly ordered? What cast of characters are going to be in your story to add complexity to your story? You don't want it to be overly ordered or overly chaotic. You want your story to be about complexity. So you need characters on both sides of those spectrums. You don't want your story to be overly ordered or overly chaotic. It needs to be complex, which means you need characters that are going to be at different levels on that spectrum. But you can't have characters that are pegged right in the middle of complex because they're going to be boring. We want to see what happens when these overly ordered and overly chaotic characters start bumping into each other. We want to see what happens. It's going to be interesting. When you're looking at your characters, when you're trying to create characters that are not boring, you're not going to want to cut from your story, that aren't going to drive your readers and your editors crazy, think about this lens of order, chaos, and complexity. It's going to change everything for you. If you want more resources like this, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell. You can also go to storygrid.com, sign up for the newsletter. That's where we send out all the new stuff that we're creating as StoryGrid to help you build the skills, write a book, and leave your legacy. As always, thanks for being a writer. Thanks for being a part of our community here at StoryGrid, and I'll see you next time.